Now let's begin. Today, we'll be focusing on, on four subjects. But before I go to any of them, I really want to hear from us your understanding of what HSE is about. Just give us, give me your quick overview what HSE is all about. What's HSE all about? I need um I want to know your knowledge of HS, what HS is about, one platform. Yes. Anybody? I will point to it's about safety. That's a very strong one. Thank you, sir. Yes. Anybody again? Those of us on Zoom, don't forget that you should go to the chat box and um, simply and simply put in your sign in, put in your username and password. Please talk to me. What is it? Ah. Potential hazard. Thank you. Ah. Sorry, Dennis, I've started my class. So are you okay? Okay, okay. Sorry, just a moment. Let me. Let me give a code to Dennis. Please just bear with me. There needs something up there. So that. Yes, my dear. Okay, I think it's still migrating around. Or check at the reception. I've not collected it. Okay, you also indicate governor. See again. See. Just a moment, I'm almost there. Um, Victory, please indicate that your governor is. Seventy five eighty five eighty. Did you get it? Did you get it? Yeah, seventy five eighty five eighty. Thank you. Please, sorry for that. So Awesome. Anybody want to say something again? What safety? Yes, sir. What's HSC about? Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone who contributed. HSC is about managing hazards in your operation so as to ensure that it does not impact on people in that organization it does not impact on your um, on the environment the host environment of course we're not talk, we're not really looking at the entire global environment we're just looking at the environment where that operation your organization is cited so we use the term host environment, so as to protect your reputation and your assets. So HSC in a nutshell is, a, is hazard management. You understand? When people wake up and go to work every day, sometimes they don't come back the way they went. 
I remember a very, very, a very common one or one that comes to me is my classmate. He was a senior student. He was a year ahead of me in the university. And my course requires that you do a period of, um, of um, is it what we call it, CWS or IT? He went for his six months IT. He came back with this part of his hand chopped off. From like the one holding it here was gone. So he came with bandage to continue his course. And in asking to find out what happened, he told us that he, the machine he was working with is what chopped off his hand. So a lot of time people go to work and they come back not as they went. Maybe because an accident has happened to them in the workplace, they have been impacted by one or two hazards that exist in the, there in the workplace. So health, safety, and environment. Where are you? I'm trying to sign you in. Okay. Health, safety, and environment is a cause that helps us to know to appreciate those operational hazards. Some people will say occupational hazard also is correct. And of course, what are the principles and the practices that we can adopt to ensure that people are protected from this hazard, assets, our assets and our reputation and the environment is also protected. So that's what it's all about. Many industries, Many companies across industries don't play with it. One of them in our, in our nation is oil and gas. Oil and gas don't play with HSE. They will tell you that our number one business here is safety. I'm sure you must have gone to places at their gate to see safety first. Am I correct? Yeah. What does that mean to you? Can we interrogate that? When you see on, on an entrance gate, safety first, what does that mean? It means what? No, please, let's stop. On that bridge, most of us are knowledgeable. You understand, if not all of us. What does that mean to you? Safety first. Think about safety before embarking on anything. Be cautious. Somebody was saying something there. Safety first. Let's. I need. I need response, please. Let's make it that. Sorry, HSC is not as too hard as PMP. This one is a very friend. <laughs> it's not as too hard as PMP. It's. Thank you for what you've said. It's also. It also means to a large extent that no matter what your goal is coming to this place. Safety should be your number one priority. Should be your number one priority. So in this course, we are going to be learning how do we deal with hazards in our operation. People who run courses like this may end up being safety officers, safety supervisors, safety managers. HSA has level one, two, and three. So what we have started right now that will take us for the next three weeks is level one and two. At the end of level one and two, those of us who have interest for supervisory level HSC, which is what is called level three, you will still invite you by next month because our first level three HSC for the year is by April, it ought to have happened by March, but because of the election timetable, we are adjusted. You understand? So you, we still invite you. Level three takes another three Saturdays of training because another certification on its own. This is, uh, this is um, one and two on its own, and then level three. Level three ideally is to take you another payment because it's not among your five program, but I think since last year, or last two years, we made it that if you train one and two with us, you don't pay for level three. You understand? So, and you only pay for your credential, which is just about, is it three, five? I don't know. I'll find out. 
and all that, your certificate. But remember, level three is not for everybody. Uh -huh. So that's why we say we make sure we separate it. You know, I hear people say we do level one and two and three within um, two weeks. I'm like, what are you doing? We don't understand. Level three on its own is another three weeks because that's managerial level HSE. There we we'll begin to talk about issues like setting policy for health and safety. We talk about issues like hierarchy of um, of controls and so on and so forth. And so so, but let's leave that. Meanwhile, today. Please just pass it so that I will not forget it. Thank you, ma. You understand? Today, we'll look at introducing workplace hazard and we'll appreciate what accident is, not the one that happens on the road. <laughs> you understand? Then we we'll look at what is called HEM and we we'll look at, uh, at, um, at JHA. But I must prepare your mind that when it comes to managing hazard in workplace, there are two things we always do. We apply principles and we apply practices. So our learning across HSE will always be involved. We involve principles and practices. You understand? There are so many practices we are going to be learning. Practices like JHA, practices like unsafe act auditing, practices like um, accident investigation and, and, um, and reporting, practices like um, permit to work system, PTW, and the list goes on and on. And then there are many principles we also will learn that we will apply. Those of us on Zoom, if you're joining us on Zoom for the first time, please remember your video needs to be off and your mic needs to be off also. Waiting be hazard. What is hazard? Say something. Hear something, say something. What hazard? Go ahead, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. Anything that has the capacity to cause harm is hazard. Anything that has the potential to cause harm. Harm to who? To who? Now let's take it beyond just to people. Anything that has the potential to cause harm to people, to our environment, to our assets, to our reputation, when we talk about HSC, these are the four in focus. People, environment, assets, and reputation. Anything that has the potential to cause harm to any of these four is considered to be hazard. Please pay attention. You, you didn't say it caused harm. You didn't say anything that caused harm. You said it has potential. It has inherent capacity to create harm. That's hazard. So that when you walk in a place, you may actually have several hazards. The fan hanging above us, is it a hazard? Is it a hazard? Yeah. It is a hazard. I don't know about you. I have been somewhere where this ceiling fan fell on somebody. And I'm sure maybe one, some of us have also experienced a situation of wanting to put on your dress and then you had an accident by the fan. So that's a hazard. That there's a potential of this fan, fan to cause harm. Has it caused harm? No. Of course, part of the larger discussions in level three HSE is risk assessment. How can you know whether this, this fan is a risk or this hazard is a risk? Is the risk high? Is it moderate? Is it low? You understand? Of course, the risk of risk causing harm is quite low as long as everybody maintains the right behavior. And the right behavior here is not go the jump up. You understand? <laughs> and even if you're, you're shouting hallelujah, you need to make sure, depending on your height, that you don't go that far and all that. Is that okay? So, anything that has the potential to cause harm, Lawa, Abdul, please, your mic, your camera should be off. <laughs> so in workplaces, we have so much hazard. There's no workplace you don't have hazard. If you find one, come and tell me. 
Hazard is inherent in every kind of operation. Maybe you're thinking, hey, I work in a bank now. There is no hazard. Who told you? Sometimes you feel that because your work involves system only, there's no hazard. Have you heard about economics? We're going to see that very soon. The hazard associated with your workstation. I'm sure some of us, there are sometimes you see it, you begin to feel pain at your waist region. Am I correct? Yes. Sometimes you begin to feel pain on your wrists because you've been busy processing maybe things on computer keyboard. You begin to feel this sensation that feels like a Capatonis syndrome. We feel it a lot whenever we have done some manual work that involve frequent movement of a particular joint. You understand? And you feel that sensation. So there's hazard in every operation. Every workplace has hazard. So this hazard we're talking about, like I said earlier, has the capacity of impacting people, impacting our environment, impacting our assets as an organization. When we say people, what do we mean? We mean workers. We mean contractors. Because these contractors, because they have something to do for you, they come into your operational vicinity. And Hazard will not say, ah, this one will be staff. May we leave her? No. People also mean visitors. Periodically, somebody comes to visit you where you work. Somebody share with me. He works. I don't know why he's still working with Okakula. He came in for HSE training some years ago here in Dexan Gears. And he shared with us that an incident happened there in their in their facility in Coca-Cola. There in um, is what is it called? Is it Ido? In yeah. is it Ido? Not in not the one in um, not in Abuja here. I mean in Lagos. The one that's very close to Costain. Is it Ido or it's also, it's also called? I think it's Ido, very close to Costain. So what was his story? He said that a visitor came to see a colleague, a, a worker there, just by walking from the gates to the office he was heading to, a metallic part that was overhead fell on that guy, and he went unconscious. Apparently, what happened, as he explained, is that somebody was doing a maintenance job. <laughs> Somebody was doing a maintenance job in a, in a, what do you call it? In a confined space suspended as in like a pipe passing across. So in course of that, part of the pipe fell off. Maybe it was losing and it fell off. His story goes that the guy went unconscious. Though he didn't die, he was resuscitated in the hospital and was compensated. But the reason I'm bringing that example is because this was a visitor. So when we say people, we are saying that the hazard can have, has the potential of impacting even visitors. So I've mentioned in definition of people, workers, contractors, visitors. Which other category of people can have access to your vicinity? Apart from these three. Customers. Is it true? Yes. Which other category? What? Say it. No, no, that's what you call contractors. Contractors goes by the name contractors, suppliers, vendors, and the list goes on. Is it possible that intruders can be it can come in? People that are uninvited, they are human. They can even come with a bad motive to steal. Let's even create that worst case scenario. They came to steal and they were impacted by the hazard in your operation. Is it bad news? <laughs> I know I know. we will averagely say, ah, that serves him right. You understand? But guys, in safety, it's a bad news. Because, please, very early, let me let us know. In safety, we imagine worst case scenario. Let's paint a worst case scenario. The guy died. What do you think the media will carry? 
You know, they may not be able, they may not even be patient enough to know the full story. And they say, they begin to write report about your company, how irresponsible your company is, how people keep dying in that company, that somebody has just died there now. And what do you think that is called? Reputation damage. In as much as that person is an intruder, we need to design safety for that person also. <laughs> it sounds somehow, but you need to do. Environment is also what we are trying to protect from the impact of our operational hazards. Environment. Of course, like I said earlier, at least your host environment. Gentlemen, ladies, what sustains me and you is this environment. There's a documentary I've been going through bit by bit. It's on Netflix, Our Universe. It's a documentary voiced over by Morgan Freeman. It's interesting. I'm learning so much. From that documentary, I was able to learn that this energy that I have, that you have, it originates from the sun. And somehow the plant traps it and it begins to move from one point. They showed how the energy from sun, the plant takes it and then it moves it over to different other, other sources so that when I eat, you understand, I'm actually having access to that energy. You get it. Very, very interesting. If you have your time, you can. It's a long um, series. You just take your time to, to observe and see it. In as much as some of the information they are passing, I, 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 I have question mark because, of course, I need to criti crit um, crit criticize everything I see. You understand? So criticize does not mean that you need to be negative. As You need to question it. I have my view because some of them are scientific and it's not every scientific outcome I accept as a person, you understand? So, but largely speaking is interesting. This environment is what keeps us alive. That your breathing, that your life is because the environment is there. So it won't be good for you and I to carry on on our operation and do not pay attention on how much the hazards from our operation is impacting the environment. So there are what there's what we call environmental aspects, meaning those aspects of your operation that has the potential to harm the environment. We need to protect it. Do you know some companies do what you are seeing on the screen? What do you see on the screen? Wastewater, what we sometimes call effluent, being discharged into a body of water, like stream, like river. Can you think that some communities are depending on this water as their means of water supply? One of my professors in university, he was taking up pharmacology, Delhi University. He sued a company, a pharmaceutical company in Anambra State. I went to Anambra State University, Oka. He sued a company, a pharmaceutical company to court. What was the problem? He discovered that this company buried a pipeline. Nobody was seeing it and they buried it down to a river. What were they doing? They were just sending their effluent, their wastewater into the river. What is the right attitude towards wastewater? Pretty. One of us, I'm putting you in the waiting room because you're distracting. You're meant to treat it. Because of his action, that company was able to revert to the proper thing. There are many ways, there are many hazardous ways that we keep producing in our operation. Maybe you're saying, Amadi, I'm not into manufacturing. How are you handling even your waste within the office? One of them.
We need to take care of the environment. We need to look at the hazards from our operation that is also impacting the environment. If you visit places like you do, you appreciate what I'm talking about. If you go to places like Lagos or Ogun State or Port Harcourt, you see many companies letting out carbon monoxide smoke. And one of sorry to say, if you're from Niger Delta, I'm not saying this in a negative angle, but I'm saying it with the hope of action to be made. One of the dangerous places to live is the oil producing communities. Because of the kind of environmental impact happening there. And because it's hydrocarbon spills, hydrocarbons are radioactive. Go and check it. Hydrocarbon, the one you call um, crude, crude oil. Hydrocarbon is radioactive, is radioactive. You know what is radioactive? It means it has the capacity of distorting genetic makeup of a living system. That's why a long-term fear we have for people who live for a prolonged period in Niger Delta is the possibility of mutation because of the radioactive nature of hydrocarbon. So the environment needs to be protected. Scientists have warned us that if we don't repent from the way we treat the environment as an organization, that in less than 200 years time, this earth will not sustain life anymore. 200 years, they said this more than 15 years ago. That means it's now less than two, far less than 200 years time. And their, their reason, they were basing this report on the fact that the amount, the level of ozone layer depleted is as wide as the entire United States. That's huge. When you hear climate change, it is real. I was speaking with one of my sister from Burundi during the week on Wednesday. I was asking her, hey, how is your climate in Burundi? And she said, well, that it used to be all year round rain with three months of a kind of um, dry season. But she made a comment that, that these days, it is not like that because of climate change. It is real. I don't know, don't, except if you don't live in Abuja, the rain that came during the week was a blessing. The kind of heat, well, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. You live in a very cool area of Abuja. The kind of heat and all that, those are realities of climate change. Climate change does not just happen. It is the minor impact all of us are having on the environment that is creating it. So this course is intended to help us to also know how to manage hazard towards the environment. Our asset, what do you see on the screen? A whole facility is burning. What do you think is happening there? Someone did not handle fire hazards very well. And look at it. It likely may bring down the whole of the business. What will be the effect? People will lose their job. If you knew when Ebano, how many of us know Ebano? Thank you very much. As in our, towards Lokogoma Aziz. The, this was just two years ago. You understand? Big superstore, huge, was brought down by fire outbreak. Brought down. And when we do HSC analysis of that incident, yeah, the story had it. A young girl came in, went to the side, the, the, the part where they have lighters, and she took up one of the lighters, and then she ignited it and lighted something there. And because the lighters were all there, that fire started, um, they started exploding each of the lighters one by one and made the fire to escalate. But for me, in my own very quick um, surface analysis, I raised a question. Is it that... The whole of that facility was not fire smart. Fire smart, we mean they don't have a technology to detect fire or smoke. Because there are technologies available that once they sense anything like fire, they activate. In fact, some of them are so modern that they have precision. 
they can read direction where that fire is coming from. You know, the, the, the first version of that, it will be sprinkling randomly. For some of them, a modern technology has a precision. It can really target, okay, it's coming from this radius. And it focuses on that. Are you telling me that, okay, the extinguishers there are not working? Are you telling me that your workers there don't have fire firefighting awareness? Fire safety is one of the topics we are going to do in level one and two. When we come there, you will discover that most fire begins small. But let's leave that until we come there. When hazard in workplace are not well managed, the asset, our asset as a company can be impacted. You see the man burying his head in the sand, it's a shame. It depicts reputation damage. Let me ask you a question. You got a job. I'm reading, I want to give you a few information on the in the appointment letter you got. You'll be on probation for six months. Within this period of probation, you'll be paid 880,000 naira per month. And they put that after probation, they will review it upward. In fact, from your investigation, after probation, that is six months, you'll be receiving one point four million naira. You were happy. You took the letter home. From the gates, you started screaming. You were shouting. Your brother was at home or your sister. And it was like, why are you disturbing the neighborhood? Instead of you explaining, you gave, you gave him the letter, say, read yourself. And he read it. Reading it, he was with a straight face. When he finished, his first statement to you was, don't take this job. A job that is paying on probation 800 plus K. After probation, 1.4. And the first response will be from your sibling is, don't accept it. What would be your natural reaction? <laughs> no, 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 it's your elder sister or brother. You know, we don't, we don't, you don't get violence with elder ones. You understand? I know one of, one, my own reaction would be to stylishly collect my letter first. Make you know go terror. If it's, if it's um, a senior, I will in my mind say, ah, bad belly, because you don't get this kind of job. And all that, and so on. But later on, no matter what your mood is, you surely want to hear from him, from her, why she made that comment. And she was, and she's like, when you ask her, why did you tell me not to take it? She went to her room and came out with some journals, and she began to read. In 2017, this company recorded 52 deaths. <laughs> within their operation. In 2018, they recorded 61 deaths. In 2021, they recorded 23 deaths. In 2022, just last year, they've recorded 71 deaths so far. Are you changing your mind? Somebody say no. <laughs> He said, well, your case is different. <laughs> I like that. I'm not about to change our mind and not take the job. Are you sick? Okay, okay. Yeah, I have to. I have to. You know, I tell you, most of us no go agree. Most of us, we say, like my, my sister say, you know, we're very religious people in this part of the world. My case is different. Come again. I'm coming. You will have peace of you are very correct. Yes, sir. Mm. All right, thank you. But whatever the case is, I know that most of us here we still accept the job. We hear step, we hear statement like now, now some, something must kill a man. You understand? <laughs> but what message did he send to you? That company has a bad reputation very bad reputation. 
we begin to make comments like, oh, that company is not responsible. They can't even protect their workers. If I will go back a little, I know some of us will just calculate that, okay, I'll work only for one year. Make the money. You understand? It's, it's easier said than done. You know, the spirit of money. Did you discover that when you're earning 30,000 naira, you were happy? Once you start earning 100K, you discover just all of a sudden how 100K is no more enough for you. Once you start earning 200 or 500K, that's why I tell people, you see, I tell people that saving is a habit you develop from when you are earning very low. Some people give me an excuse that, ah, Mr. Mandy, you say what I say, what, what do you mean my salary will save? I say, look, oh, it has nothing to do with how much you earn. It's about habit. If you can't save when you are earning 10,000, please, at least you know me, you have my number. Call me. I can promise you, you will never be able to say when you're earning one million. It's a habit. You understand? So, my dear, as I was saying, in one year, I go work. It will shock you that by the time you collect your first salary, before the month ends, you have blown it up. You know why you blow it up? Many people that end high always have the mind that in the next 28 days, in the next 30 days, another one will come and all that. And that is why it's always good you have, if that is your case, you don't know how to save very well. Open an account. Still with that bank, you understand where you receive your salary. Open a separate account from your salary account. Mandate the bank that anytime money enters this bank, I mean this account, immediately let social percentage be taken away from here to here. And that second one, that might say that one is fixed. I must not have access to it. So that, you know, maybe most of us, we borrow from MTN, am I correct? And they only wait for the time you will recharge. Once you recharge, they take it. It's the same principle of once money enter here, the dog also percentage. It helps you to save. But whatever the case may be, that company has a bad reputation. Good reputation is good business. When you don't manage the hazard in your organization and people are impacted, environment is impacted, you're making a bad reputation for yourself. Globally, in the global stage, a campaign can come up and say, in order to fight against you, they will tell people not to buy your products. In our own African setting, you know the story we can cook. We can say that you're even mixing the blood of human being inside the product. <laughs> I know that story alone, most Nigerians or Africans will not even investigate. That's the end of it. Even most of all that are, all of all that are learned here, most of us, when you want to buy that product, that thought will come to you. Is it true? <laughs> With all your, your exposure, you still be, is it true? Maybe I should patronize their competitor and all that. So please, the goal of managing hazard is to protect people, protect the environment, our asset, and our reputation. There are different types of hazards. So some are biological. So if you walk in them, you're a caregiver, you're a medical person, you're likely going to be more exposed to that. Chemical hazards, manufacturing production guys, they are exposed to that also. And then, you know, when we say chemical hazard, let your mind not just go, oh, there was a spill on my body, inhaling it. There are different ways we ingest. We can drink, we can inhale, we can also in take it through the skin. Is it true? Yes. So inhaling it, and the problem with inhaling it is that the effect is not immediate. In my undergraduate research, I did a research on gossipol, G-O-S-S-Y-P-O-L, gossipol. It's a macromolecule found in cotton seed. 
What was the issue? What triggered it was my professor came to class in pharmacology and he was like, he is not sure whether that was a statement, whether the sonola oil, do anybody know sonola cotton seed oil? It's sonola. Yeah, sonola, as in um, S-U-N-O-L-A. It's one of the top rank um, granite vegetable oils. Yeah, it's in the market. So his comment was, I don't know whether the sonola cotton seed oil they are selling for us, whether they've taken all the, the gossip or in it. So he told us a background story of gossip or um, what he did to a community in China. And what did he do? They just discovered that the men in that community became sterile. So it became a UN emergency project. They needed to investigate what happened. So they, they were checking many things until they tried to check their diet. They saw that their diet is mostly made up of cotton seed. They do cake with it. They do many things with it. Just like in Nigeria, most of us eat rice like seven times in a week. So if you want to trace any issue concerning your diet, we check the kind of rice you are eating. So they traced it and saw that it was from their diet. And they further analyzed and they found that macromolecule cotton seed. I mean, I'm, I'm gossip. Oil. And of course, they extracted it in a raw form and then ingested it in um, experimental animal, male. And they discovered that ah, it causes irreversible sterility in men. Gossip. Oil. So I took it off. Let me go and check other products in the market and all that. Okay, to relax your mind, um, I didn't find anything. Um, my conclusion was the gossip is negligent. The gossip level is negligent. I trust my, though it was an undergraduate research, but I trust my, my findings because I think I had them, um, I had good supervisors because as I left my university, my professor was interested in the outcome. My direct supervisor was interested. And of course, I did my research in Naima, Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, the laboratory in Yaba. So I left my school in Oka to come to. So when I came to there, the head of biochemistry was interested. So he became like my physical supervisor, right? He wanted to, so everybody's eyes was on it. And as a young undergraduate, my mind was made up, I must find gossip. I must find it inside. So I did all my analysis and I was getting um, absorbance of negative and all that, now I reported it that way. But why am I bringing this? Impact of chemicals in terms of hazard can really take a long year before it shows up in people. Three weeks ago, I was in, um, in Lafarge, Lafarge, West Africa. That's one of the largest cement companies in Africa. We went to do a, a training for them. And truly, we spent three days there, truly. The atmosphere of Lafarge, Lafarge is not clear. Everywhere is full of particulates. Everywhere. So I began to imagine they are doing well in their safety or they are trying. But I still see all of them, not without no mask. If you sweep this place and mop it, come back in 10 minutes. Do like this, you see a depth of it. That's it, they're inhaling it. The impact of that, they will not see in two years. They will not see in five years. It is later in life. Being to say, ah, I don't know how my lungs is doing me and all that. We have physical hazards. Me, I don't know how God protects children. Let an adult do that in a child is doing it. What is that? He's fighting a cable connected to a source. Go and try it at home <laughs> as an adult. With my own very eyes, I have seen a child rolled over by a car. I was not told. If there's anybody who is to give the first hand report, I'm the one. Because I was at the first floor of the building. And it was a, um, what do you call it, um, Toyota 
higher sports. It was in a church premises. The service was going on. I perceived the guy got an urgent call. He dashed out, that is the driver. And he entered, not knowing that this little girl was behind him. That girl was about three. You know, as he was reversing, we were screaming. You know that in just a moment, he had already rolled over. He rolled over, complete the girl. The girl was taken to the hospital. They did everything they did in terms of analysis. Nothing happened to the young girl. So I don't know whether there's any scientists in this class who can give us a good explanation for that. You understand? <laughs> there's no need for that. <laughs> Please never try at home. Never try that at home. But of course, as parents, even when we start having children, we design safety in the house. An example of that is sockets that are very close to their reach. You have to cover it. Because they actually can try many things. Ignorance doesn't mean they can't be impacted. Let's not also now abuse the privileges that God is giving us. The one we can do, let us do. We have economics. See the spelling, it's not economics, so economics. <laughs> economics. Economics are hazard that has to do with the your workstation. Just like I explained, there are sometimes you like, ah, oh, my waist is paining me. Check your seat. Some of us, our table and our seats is not where aligned. See the way I have put this one down. Some of us, this is how we walk. You bend. For how many years? Let's take 35 years of active service. 35 years you're bending like this to walk. Ah. It will, it will take that shape. Oh. That's economics. You understand? What should be the sitting position? Anytime you sit, it must be in such that your spinal cord from neck region to the waist region must maintain a straight position. It takes consciousness to remember because even the person talking to you, I did forget most times. You understand? You understand? Conscious is from time to time I call myself to order and then I begin to readjust. You understand? So, but bending like this, it really, really can be harmful and all that. We see some people whose, mesh, whose work involves vibration. Maybe upper limb vibration, upper limb vibration means vibration of just your hand or full body vibration the entire body. And we see it a lot. If you're working with a handheld tool, you see people drilling with a handheld tool. It's upper limb vibration. If, that's, if that makes a liar chunk of your daily work, ah, there's a risk of something that looks like um, Parkinson later in the year. Because what happens is that because you've always been using your body, your tendons, your ligaments, your muscles, has undergone, I mean, a, a, long, a, a, a prolonged vibration, it weakens it. So that later in the year, you discover the person begins to have this thing that, this condition that looks like Parkinson's. Whatever the case may be, we see some hazard again, chemical, I mean, mechanical, natural um, hazard, in as much as we are careful not to say that natural disasters are hazards. You understand? Because these things are natural disasters. You get it? And they most times don't give warning. The one we have not recovered from is Turkey. Am I correct? Yeah, Turkey. That's one of the worst recorded in the history of man. How many? I think 40 something thousand people are said to be missing. Of course, we can say dead. And I saw some, some, see in the line of only God knows how it takes care of children. I saw some children that were brought out from the rubbles. I saw a little boy and he was smiling. The guy don't even know what thing they happened. <laughs> <laughs> they were just laughing and smiling at everybody and all that. 
And I'm sure they investigate, nothing happened. Another beautiful scene was when a dog was brought out. I know that means Sandra see if Amade, are you a Nigerian? How can you be rejoicing that a dog was brought out? But that's life anyway, also. You get it? So natural disasters, sometimes we contemplate, can we call it hazard? Volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, floods. Can they really be classified as hazard? Please, on your own time, take more a look at the best way to deal with some of the hazard associated with your or with um yes, you want to say something. Please, question. You know, we say because um turning towards what you mentioned from the level of that sense. And uh, over time, big floods and pay might be indicated by something that's um, the result of the activity of people in yes, the very correct. and hazards and kids, like you said, it's potential to cause harm. Yes, to cause harm to people know. And when you look at the ones that we have spoken about previously, the uh, chemical and all that. So yeah. it's, with that in mind, can't natural disaster be in So, um, well, if, if we have already created a condition for the hazard, for the natural disaster to happen, then we can, for me, I can now say, okay, we have created a hazardous situation. For example, we are busy blasting and indiscriminately rocks with explosives for many years. I think we are only weakening our earth structure around here so that we have given more room for tremor or quake to happen. I think at that point, I can really say there's a contributory impact of man. And I'll say we've created that hazard. But the one I'm referring to, natural hazard, natural um, um, disaster being hazard, is the one that there is no any indicator that we contributed to it. You understand? So like you say, flood, most of the flood we're expressing these days is actually contributed by us. Maybe drainage block. We are blocking our drainages. Maybe things we're supposed to do, like the one we know of this last year, that government of Nigeria is supposed to have dredged their own part of the basin, and we didn't do, Cameroon did their own, and we didn't do our own. That also can be said that we, our inactions or actions contributed to it. So I agree with you. So a place, a situation where, where man has made it possible for this disaster to occur, I think we can really say we created this hazardous situation. But I'm looking at it that, okay, this thing has been like this since all of us came to this part of the world, all of a sudden, boom. Can we say that that rock that has been there, no, I'm just pointing, that rock in a mountain form that has been there, we thought it just a mountain. Can we call it a hazard? No. But all of a sudden, there was a volcanic eruption from that rock. That's the kind of natural disaster I'm not trying to classify as hazardous. You understand? But when this natural disaster now occurs, it creates hazardous conditions. You understand? It now creates hazardous condition. Because when the earthquake happens or tremor, the building didn't collapse, but it's now bending like this. We're not allow you to stay there anymore because say, this building is hazardous. You understand? When the mountain erupted, you understand? We'll probably have to evacuate people from around certain perimeter because we begin to imagine that there are still some molten is it magma they call it there that there's a possibility of the next one erupting also because the first one has created a hazardous possibility so so it can be any of those ways i was saying something this one page document to be useful how do you keep your hair your eyes your document when you're working with system and it's important because in our generation, this is our tool. Am I correct? Computer, display screen. 
Technology has evolved. In those days, the kind of radiation coming from there, after working with computer for one year, you will get eye problem. But latest technologies, they have dampened it. That doesn't mean it has been totally taken away. Because that glaring is still, is still in there. But very important, if your work involves sitting down, which I know most works in Abuja involves sitting down, it is always advisable to take a seat break every 30 minutes. That break may be, when we say seat break, it means stand up maybe for a few minutes and go and do something. It could mean stand up to go and take water from dispenser. Don't be a big madam that tells, bring water for me. See, that big madam or big or guard thing can be harmful because that habit of stand up by yourself to go and make your coffee may be an opportunity to stretch out. Somebody say, made a comment and it got me thinking, we are designed to move. Talking about human beings, that we are designed to move, as in not to sit, but to keep moving. And I think medical people will tell us, as much as you can afford it, keep moving. These are examples of economic hazard. So let me go away from hazard and talk about workplace accident. What is accident? Unwanted, awesome. That's a very good choice of word. Anybody want to say something again? I don't know if we can see very well. That first picture depicts a man who was walking at height, will be on a ladder, and he fell. I used to have a, a friend, Ayo Samson, in Lagos growing up. Samson was into, was an electrician, so he does wiring. He got this job he was doing. It was a story building at a high, a high rise. I can't remember if it was one or two story building. Bottom line, the ladder he was standing on fell. Ayo fell from that high to the ground. As we speak to you today, he doesn't have teeth because everything left. Although if you see him, you won't know because at the end of the treatment, they put plastic at Fisher for him. When you visit him in his house, he removes it. Out. That's accident. Maybe this guy also got hit by something he's working with. The video there is showing a picture of somebody walking with a moving part and probably his fingers shot off. I visited a young man in Guarimpa, one of the hospitals there. He was with Setrapo. What was his issue? He said that he went out for surgery. His five fingers were to be corrected. That in their sight, all right there, they were trying to guide the metallic pipeline to position. You know how they will use a chain from a crane and that chain lost position. The pipeline smashed his fingers. Just an accident. Like my sister said, accident is an unplanned, unwanted occurrence. Nobody wakes up and says today, for fees, I will cause the accident, make it happen. If you do that, in English language, we will call it sabotage. In African setting, we say you'll be winged. <laughs> you understand? Exactly. Say you're, you're one of the members of the village people and all that. Say that's sabotage. An example of sabotage is arson. A-R-S-O-N. When you deliberately set a facility or asset on fire, it's no more accidental. We call it sabotage. Because accidents are unplanned, accidents are unwanted. Always bear that in mind. 
continue with the definition. It is always caused by unsafe act and unsafe condition. In case you were thinking accident just happened, please take it away from your mind. Accidents are caused. What causes accident includes one, unsafe acts that people carry out. And two, the unsafe condition that they create. We'll come back to that later on. The third component of that definition is that when accident happen, it results in one, injury or damage. When we use damage, we are talking about impact of accident on environment, impact of accident on our assets, impact of accident on our reputation. So we use the word damage. When we use the word injury, it's on people. But when it is not an injury on people, like what I say, the chemical you're inhaling it, you're not seeing the effect in what is damaging your health. We say damage to health. So an accident can happen and it produces injury or damage. It can happen and it produces both injury and damage. It can happen and it produces neither injury nor damage. Is that a good news? The number three point, is that a good news? Accident happened. There was no injury. There was no damage. Good news, right? Please, that's not good news. Do you know what we call that kind of incident? We call it near miss. We call it near miss. Another word we call it in safety is close call. Close call. Near miss, by definition, is an incident caused by unsafe act and unsafe condition but created no harm. This is near miss. What do you think is that, that picture is saying? Have you had incidents like that? Incidents like thank God. Have you had an a thank God kind of incident? Have you had that goose pimple kind of incident before? I have had. I remember three years ago, I took my son, my daughter. We came to Mob Plaza. Actually, they were doing a certain work for me there. So in a shop, he sat down. My son sat down. And there in the shop, they sell papers. They stacked paper up there. As he just stood up, a load of that paper fell. The difference between him and the paper where it fell was, was a line. If that had fallen on that boy's head, I, I'm sure would have been having issue with neck bone because it was heavy. That was near me. And since then, I say, no, I won't take the children to anywhere they are making any production until they are grown. This load was was supposed to fall on this guy. This is where it fell. In Africa, we give testimony about it. And it's good to give testimony about it. We call it near miss. No harm, true, true. But it's not a good news. The difference between an incident that produced harm, called accident, and incident that produced no harm, Called near me. The difference between them is time. Just time. If nothing is done about it and it continues to happen, that near me is one day we create harm. So when we check your safety performance, one of the parameters we read is how many near misses recorded within the year. There's a man called Frank Baird. He did a kind of um, research somewhere in the 60s. And his conclusion was this. He said, whenever you see one accident that produces a serious harm, 
bear in mind that 600 near misses had already happened. Play it in your mind. For every one serious accident, there is one, there is 600 near misses already happened. Application. The ratio of accident to near miss in organization is ratio one to 600. What does that mean? Near misses happen more often. But because it's a tango scenario, there's no evidence most times. So workers keep quiet about it. But some companies have improved on, 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 on making sure it is reported. What do they do? They reward people when they report it. SPDC does that, the one you call share. Share for, um, 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 Petroleum Development Company. They do that. If you report any hazard or any near miss, your name is recorded. I've been privileged to work with um, a company that was servicing SPDC. You understand? They record your name. At the end of the business year, everyone who reported is rewarded. Of course, if you reported more, you get more reward. They were motivating people to report near misses. There are companies that, play, that use blame game. When you report, you say, hey, now you cause them now. It's not you. One day you bought this company down. When you use blame game, next time I know go call and report. Let's build on it. Accident and cost. Two things. Let's answer this question. Are accidents inevitable? Yes. Are they inevitable? Yes. Do accidents occur as a, as, a as, as a natural consequence of our daily routine? Do accidents occur as a natural consequence of a daily routine? Can accident be avoided? Yes. If you answer yes to the last one, then your answer to the other one should be no. Accident does not automatically occur as consequences of our everyday activities. Accidents are not inevitable. Accident can be prevented. They can be avoided. You understand? If accident can be avoided, it tells us that accidents are actually caused. Every accident does not just happen. They are caused. Please remember these two things. They are caused, one, by unsafe acts, and two, unsafe condition. Waiting the unsafe act without speaking plenty English, this is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> this is some safe act. Can we paint a story about this? This guy is the assistant of the operator. They supply hard rocks, stones, sands. They are on break. They are one hour break. The guy has finished taking what he wants to take for the break. The operator is still somewhere trying to enjoy himself for the break. He decided to take a nap here. That's the assistant. All of a sudden, the operator got an emergency call. You guys need to bring so so thing. Nah, 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 nah. And he looked for his colleague. He knows him. He said, I beg my quickly go supply this and come back. He ignited the engine. What happened is exactly as it is in your memory. Of the whole place to catch a nap between wheels. It's an unsafe act. And we see this happen in our society every day. We see trucks load with whatever food item. And you see somebody sitting at the peak of it. And in the cruise. Unsafe acts are actions you make without thinking of your own safety or the safety of other people. 
That's unsafe. Act. Act. Let's take an example. You went to start operating an equipment without an authorization. You think because you have driver's license, you can drive anything that moves. Hey, they are looking for truck drivers in US, I mean in Canada. And he said, let me apply. I've been driving for 20 years. Which waiting? Say car and an SUV. So for that, you can drive truck. I mean, you can move trucks. In organizations, only people who are authorized to move an equipment should move it. So when you go ahead to move an equipment without authorization, that's an unsafe act. Lack of PPE or improper use of, what is PPE? Personal protective equipment. I think it's next week we'll talk, it's a topic of next week. Personal protective equipment. If you're supposed to use a PPE, say for example, you're supposed to do this work with a helmet, what we also call hard hat, and you are not putting on that helmet, you are carrying out an unsafe act. Or maybe you're putting on the helmet, but you didn't properly fit it in to produce that rebouncing effect. The goal of helmet is so that when anything hard knocks on it, it can bounce, produce that cushioning effect. It always have an adjustment so that it can produce that cushioning effect. When you just put it on, you know, you know adjust them. It's in proper use. That's an unsafe act. Failure to tag out or to lock out. This happens in some industries like in power industry. We want to do a maintenance in Katangbe Power and Substation, Nepal. And then you put off the control unit of supply, but there was no tagging out or locking out. You went ahead to do whatever you're doing. You know how it happens. Somebody could come and say, ah, well, if I suppose get live by this afternoon, we'll go off the Guanipa and he put it on. And so not knowing that some guys are in the field doing maintenance job. This has been the source of many deaths in this country. So what do we do? When you put up that control, there needs to be a tag out or lockout so that nobody has access to it until that work is done. Failure to tag out or lock out is an unsafe act. When you operate equipment at an unsafe speed, unsafe act. Failure to place a warning of a danger to warn is an unsafe act. With my own very eyes, I have seen people die in this Abuja because there was no warning sign on the road. Yes, one happened at Minister's Hill. The other one happened somewhere at Chambian Plaza, as is of Barimpa when they were dualizing that road in 2010. You understand? And then of course, it was late. These two police guys were coming with their bike, not knowing that there were heavy, heavy rocks quarried on the construction site. Because of the traffic, it was that they collided with the rock. The, the, one of them died in the other one was still struggling with life. What was the problem? There was no warning sign. The following day, the company working there now brought caution tape and then a warning lamp to place. Second, I saw what ministers here. All of a sudden, they blocked the road with this heavy, um, what they call it, pavement. And I know that accident happened in the night. A vehicle came and crashed on it. There's no problem blocking the road for any reason, but was there a sign to warn people about that? Failure to place a sign in a danger is an unsafe act. When you bypass safety devices or safety, dev or, or safety devices or remove it, it's an unsafe act. You know, in some places we install fire alarm. Because what you want to do is produce smoke. You know, when they remove one of the cables of the alarm, make the thing no shout. That's an unsafe act. Maybe your vehicle, they put speed limit. Just drive small bear, come on, this speed limit here. And then you disconnect it, that's an unsafe act. You are bypassing safety devices. When you use a tool that is defective, when you use tools that are for that are not, you're used to it for other purposes than what they are intended for. It's an unsafe act. A very common one most of us do. Please stop doing it from now. 
You use your teeth to open Coca Cola. <laughs> it's an unsafe act. You understand? It's an unsafe act. Working in hazardous location without adequate protection and warning, improper repair of equipment, horseplay. Let me let me give you a story to share what a horseplay is. I was not there, but I, I had a story. A young boy, a student, there in Unilag, driving. And he saw his friend, a lady, ahead. The, the, the lady was walking ahead, so he was driving from behind. So, you know, this kind of thing, you just want to scare someone with the vehicle. That's what the guy actually wanted to do. On getting to the gear, instead of brake, he used accelerator. Yeah. Story had it that the girl didn't survive it. Imagine using a little at that close range. You understand? What do we call that? That's horseplay. Horseplay are those unsafe ads that look like fun. I've, I'm a victim of horseplay too. This guy is still there to tell me that I've been his victim. Growing up, a, um, if my friend was eating sugar cane, long one. I told him to cut for me. He sounded very, very nice. He said, go and bring knife. I went in and brought knife. He collected the knife and said, should hold the other end of the sugar cane. And he said he will cut it here. The place he was pointing was where my hand was. Before I could finish, why will you cut it there? He had already cut. <laughs> this car is deep. To tell you the injury was. In a God save me, so I still maintain the hand. Did I eat the sugar cane? Obviously not. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> they took me to clinic to stop the bleeding and all that. That was mostly. We walk by the road, we see people trying to tell us that their medicine can is effective. They go carry knife, they do like this. I see them a lot around who say asses. They will just be cut, they will carry sharp knife and be cut. That's hospital. The day that juju will fail, you just see intestine come out. Some of us at home who are ironing, your sibling is teasing you. And you get to a point, you just leave the eyes and say, I will burn you now. Instead, I go bring your face, say, you never burn you well. You understand? <laughs> Those are horseplay. Or is it that you're sitting maybe at the first floor by the corridor or pavement, and then you just sleep and say, hey, I will fall. Those are horseplay. They look like fun, but they are safe act. So every horse play is an unsafe act. Wearing unsafe clothing, you're operating a machine and you're putting on tight. It's an unsafe act too, because machines have many rotary points and you don't know which of them can pick it. This thing applies to us ladies. You're operating a machine, you're, you're wearing a long hair. Why not say don't do long hair? But at that point, you need to pack it and cover it. Because that's considered unsafe clothing. Taking an unsafe position can also be an unsafe act. The second thing that causes accident is unsafe condition. What's unsafe condition? Condition, condition. The other one is act. You understand? Let me illustrate with a scenario. So on closing work, on a particular Saturday training, up there, um, there was no water supply. Um, water board seized water. So the last person that used the restroom was angry, didn't lock it. They had wash hand basin. Already, we had told someone to come and fix our farm. The ceiling fan was not working. So when it came on Sunday to work, Everywhere was flooded. Apparently, in the ninth of Saturday, they had restored power supply, I mean water supply, and it flooded everywhere. So when the guy came to do the fan, he saw water everywhere. was like, ah, I might just do my work, go. And he started walking. As he was doing the work, one of the cables, live cables, fell on the floor. And he got electrocuted. What caused that accident? At that point in time, the flooded floor is in an unsafe condition. If that same cable had fallen on a floor like this, 
they will simply pick it up and continue walking. What caused that accident was an unsafe condition. Unsafe conditions are conditions created by people also, but provides the likelihood of accident happening. Some of us do it. Again, your fan is not working. Wait till the probe, the regulator don't spoil. You say, I bet, come on, this student do it a lot. Come on, this regulator, Jerry. And then whenever you need light, you put red and black wire. And to give you the highest speed, boys do it a lot. After all, we are usually like 34 boys in a room. So we need a fan at the highest speed. You never can tell. Maybe the following morning, you started gisting the last game, premiership football I mean, game, and then somebody started laughing and then fell on the wall there. What do you think would call that cause that electrocution? If there was a regulator, you wouldn't have had that electrocution. It's because that's an unsafe condition. Defective tools or equipment or supplies is said to be in an unsafe condition. When there's inadequate support, especially when you're working on heights, you know what is called support, like um, a ray guard around you, that's an unsafe condition. When a workplace is congested, it's an unsafe condition. When there's no adequate warning system, it's an unsafe condition. Truth be told, truth be told, this room on the average is an unsafe condition because we don't have egress. You know what it's called? Okay, the egress is even locked. You can see that the egress is locked. Egress is what you call exit. Safety people use the term egress. You understand? E-G-R-E-S-S. -S. You understand? It is the same thing as exit. We say egress. You understand? So ideally, if this place is in full capacity, it would be very bad to have people here. Because when emergency happens, this is too small for evacuation. But forgive us, no be us, no can. You understand? You know we are paying for our office is upstairs. You understand? So in a okay, fire or explosion hazard is an unsafe condition as well. Um, you pour, you fill your generator. Some of the fuel spilled. You use the rack and clean it, and you keep that same soaked rack beside the generator. You created unsafe condition. Poor housekeeping, a topic on its own we'll discuss. Housekeeping means things being where they are supposed to be. When you have poor housekeeping, it's an unsafe condition. Slippery floors, like we said, trailing wires, unsafe condition. Hazardous atmosphere, example, if there's no enough oxygen here, unsafe condition. Maybe if um, there are toxic gases in here, uh, those are hazardous atmosphere. Excessive noise, poor ventilation, misuse of fire equipment. So friends, what is the point? We are simply saying accidents are caused by unsafe acts and unsafe condition. The second, the third aspect of that definition is when accident happens, it produces effects. The effects that accident produces, we look at it in two ways. The one we see and the one we don't see. The one you see is nothing compared to the one you don't see. Iceberg is used to illustrate it, like what we have on the screen. The effect of accident is like an iceberg. The part we see that is obvious is small compared to the one we don't see. When accident happens, oh, somebody injured. Okay, we're going to spend money on medical treatment. We're going to replace. Those are effects you see. Can you see mental agony? You cannot. So let's get a worst case scenario. The person died because of that workplace accident. Do you know how many people that were depending on that person? 
We're not quantifying the effect of, of the fact that this man is gone. The school fees of the children that cannot more be paid. So the effect of accidents that we don't see is far greater than the ones that we see. So we say accidents are very expensive. Is it compensating workers? Is it in terms of um, replacing equipment that have been lost or whatever? There are people who receive direct effect of this accident. There are people who receive indirect effect. The injured employee is directly affected. Is the person who receives the physical pain, who goes to the mental agony, who may be disabled temporarily or permanently. A temporary dis um, a disability means for a period of time, you can't use that function of your body, but over time you can. And it happens to us when we work in a noisy environment. You discover that when you work in a place where the noise is hard, when we talk to you in a low voice, you won't hear until we shout. You are experiencing temporary disability. What we need to do is to remove you from that environment of noise and rehabilitate. You understand? But permanent disability in hearing will mean your eardrum is damaged. The injured employee is also the one who loses his leisure or his earning or even his life. So they are affected directly. Companies are affected directly when accidents happen. Company spends money. Company will lose production by what we call LTI, lost time injury. What is LTI? Anytime you are not working because an accident has happened, is what we call LTI, lost time injury. It goes to one minute, two minutes, three minutes. Once it is one hour, we make comment like we've lost one man hour. We've lost two man hours. We've lost three man hours. And it's equivalent to production loss. Reputation could be damaged. That's how the company is affected. And there may be possible court cases here and there. Some people are, are affected indirectly. Who are they? The family of the, of the employees, the community, and the nation may also be affected indirectly. What is the point? Anyhow you want to look at it, the effect of accident is surely undesirable. Nobody wants it. For humanitarian reason. What do we call humanitarian reason? There is nobody as, a, as an employer that will say, I want my workers to be involved in an accident. No family member will say, I want my brother or sister to be involved in an accident. That's what we call humanitarian reason. For economic reason, accidents are undesirable. Why? Because we spend. Is it medical bills? Is it compensation? Is it replace, replacement of assets? When you don't manage the hazard in your workplace very well and impact the environment, the community can take you people to court. And court will say, compensate them. You know that that's their source of water. Go and build water for them. And that's money. That's economic loss. The law stipulates that certain safe conditions be provided for workers. At least in Nigeria, we have our Factory Act of 1990, which stipulate guidelines on safety design for workers in workplaces. Accident kills morale. That's one reason why accidents are undesired. It kills morale. I don't know about you. Have you ever been driving? and you get to a place, you saw an accident, and you saw some blood. You were running at 120. When you got there, by the time you leave there, check your speedometer, you were humble. <laughs> Let's play it. When accident happened in workplace, it beats down the morale of people. For some reason, solidarity, other reason, I beg go, let me be careful, low. Make me to no come get this kind of situation. Lower morale means lower production. Accident indeed we have said it is all desirable because it can damage reputation. Look at this statement. Since the consequences of accident are undesirable, it is important that effort should be directed to prevent at preventing them. This can be achieved through an understanding of the factors responsible for occurrence 
of accidents and eliminating or controlling them or mitigating the effect of the occurrence. So if this accident or this are undesirable, accident or desirable, we should prevent it. How do we prevent it? Let's ask ourselves the question first. Waiting they cause accident. What are those factors that makes people to carry out unsafe acts? Since we say unsafe act, unsafe condition create accident. What did they make people they carry out unsafe acts? What did they make people they, they what do you call it to create unsafe condition? We can say ignorance. You hear comment like this, you will learn on the job. Somebody is employed, he's not trained, he's not given proper orientation of the hazard involved in the work and how to prevent accident from happening. He said, don't worry, learn on the job. Is it not the person die before you could begin learn? Mm -hmm. So he discovered that workers, some workers don't even know the implication of their action. So they carry out unsafe acts, they don't say, because they don't even know the consequences of their action. That you're ignorant of the consequences of your action doesn't mean that the consequences will not happen. Ignorant does not mean you're, you're, not, you're not a graduate. Ignorant does not mean you're not a professor, you don't have a PhD. Ignorance here means the person is not trained on safe working practice. I love SPDC again, I mentioned. One of the few questions they, they will always ask whenever we come offshore is, have you been trained on safety? And the constant answer is yes. You understand? But SPDC will always make more effort to take every, away every doubt. They will, after your medical check, to know that you are stable. The next point of call is safety department. They will assign someone to you to sit with you to give you safety orientation. Do you know what they are trying to achieve? To take away ignorance. The reason people create unsafe art and carry out unsafe, I mean, create, carry on safe art, create unsafe condition, it could be that they are physically or mentally unable. I have this guy for the past 15 years. He had been working in this organization without leave. Nobody say no get leave, oh, but anytime it's time for him to go for leave, management will come to him and beg him and say, ah, let's monetize your leave now, as in let's convert it to money. Do you know why? That guy, if he does not mount his position, the machine he controls, company loses close to 20 million in a day. So it's very important. So each time there's leave time, they will bear and bear less monetize. And as an African man that has so many responsibilities, that monetization makes sense to him. He only has Sundays. They work Monday to Saturday. Guess what? One day, his classmate was having birthday party. And he, and he considered that it was on a Sunday evening. He was happy. Ah, he said, for, for long, I've never connected with my guys. So he went to the party on that Sunday evening. He forgot himself and he drank until he was extremely drunk. He was assisted home. The following day is Monday, he must be at work. As he went to work, he was feeling like he was sober. But you and I know that the influence of alcohol was still there. As he mounted to start working on his machine, on pushing whatever he wanted to push, the blade shot his two hands off. Analysis came. What caused the accident? At that point, the guy was not ignorant. 15 years, he must have been trained and retrained. He was mentally unable. He was under influence. And that is why companies have what we call drug use policy. Alcohol and drug use policy. Smoking policy. Depending on the nature of job you do for them, they want to make sure that consistently there's no trace of alcohol in your bloodstream to avoid any possibility of being under an influence. That guy was under influence because at that point, he was in benzene. Didn't he say, that is not be played anymore. <laughs> the number three reason people carry out unsafe acts, create unsafe condition, 
It's attitude. Wrong attitude. Attitude is the reason after this training on safety and all the trainings on safety, even when you are mentally and physically okay, attitude is the reason why you will still carry out on that as a plan. Attitude says, you know the consequences of what you want to do, the possible consequence, and you still did it. That's attitude now. This is the umbrella where many people fall under wrong attitude. I know very well that throwing this thing off my car will litter the environment and impact the environment. I did it. Attitude. I know that not putting on my earmuff is going to create possible damage of my eardrum. But I don't say I'm being a three minutes I won't spend here. Attitude. If we are going to prevent accidents, we must take away these deficiencies in people. Ignorance, physical or mental inability, and wrong attitude. We must take it away, identify them, and deal with them. How do we do with it as I round off for today? Dealing with them is equivalent to measures for preventing accidents. And there are four E's to remember. When you talk about preventing accidents, preventing I think about four E's. Engineering measure. How do we prevent accidents? We can deploy engineering measures. What, that, what does, does that mean? These are the measures we use to take away unsafe, to correct unsafe conditions. Remember the scenario of the flooded floor and the, the electrician working on the fan? How the, the wire fell and electrocuted him? What caused the accident on safe condition? How could you have prevented that accident? We just by mopping that water and drying the surface. That's engineering. Remember the regulator that was spoiled and they were connecting red and black wire and it caused an accident. How can we prevent it? It's by engineering measure. What's the engineering measure here? Go get a regulator and put. A wire is trailing. When people go against the rules, they are sanctioned. When people are consistently keeping the rules, I'm rounding up now. They are rewarded to encourage others to emulate them. Also, encouragement, which is where it comes. Like I told you earlier, near misses in some places, hazard when you report it, you're rewarded. When people are doing the right thing, say the right safety procedure, let them be rewarded. Thank you, man. It will propel others to emulate them. The same way in enforcing, when people go against the rule, we sanction them. Others will like fear. As I beg you, I don't want that kind of sanction. So, friends, these are the four ways we can prevent an accident. Like I said earlier, accidents are caused. Accidents can be can be can be prevented. An accident produces consequences. Any question? Let me end here. Next week we can continue. But meditate on this word from Confucius. Confucius said that the sedum, the sedum, I mean the cautious, sedum air. You know the meaning of that? I don't know. Was any man called Confucius? It was he's in the family of Aristotle and Co. and all that. For he said that if you're careful, you scarcely will make a mistake. You understand? And I think it's a word that also applies to accident. Be careful. One thing safety training does for you is that by the time you walk through this door, you see your attitude is going to change. Not only through this door, even at home, you're now beginning to say, that's hazard. This is hazard. This unsafe act. This is an unsafe condition. And of course, those are the changes that definitely training is supposed to elicit. Thank you, guys. God bless you. Thank you. So next week, when we come back, we'll continue with hazard and effect management process and JHA, and then we we'll go into practices. Different safety practices we'll be discussing. Thank you.
Well, it's, it's closing next week, Saturday. The date is there. And uh, it's Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Those of us on Zoom, thank you for being there. Um, this is the end of our session for today. I hope you put your name for the attendance as expected. I will see us next week um, as we continue in our, on our learning project management. Enjoy yourself and um, all the best. Thank you. I sent you that song. I sent everything you need. Everything. Okay. My dear. Let me just say, you can read everything you write. And that's right. They say, log on to this. So you know, I don't think you open this. Okay. Is you log on to the first one is telling you the timeline for the project. Second one is telling you the site you have to log on to. And um, when you log on to that, you put your username and password. Then you get that. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I can share the video with you. Yes. It's only your turn to Question. Okay, no, no, I don't know. But today, yes, I will be part of the analysis. No, okay, I said, but don't. If you've not started, just wait for the test. Yeah, so I can send to you, right? Uh, but you can invite me. It depends on when you're calling. Are you calling me? Ah, see this one. I don't get light. You must think you work all the time. It's a fantastic thing about how we talk about how we do it. So I need to go back to you. Thank you for the books on the internet and how they will be one of the things to make your message. I will share some for you. I will share it with you. I will share it with you. I will share it with you. Yeah, but it might be the same. Yes, it's in the evening. My answer, my friends are always sent to the And what about the other day? I mean, if I was going to go to the other day, I would say, I we actually like not work for me. But that one was time, even when we start, I can do it. You can still join. Yeah, it is. Hey, I'm good, thank you. Okay, for the public speaking, it's all substance. Okay, okay, what's your name? I can troubleshoot that. Let me let me write it out. Just a moment. I want to take it to
C'est Daniel, right? Yes. Daniel. D-N-E-B-E-N-E-B. Yes. N-E-B. Is that all? Yes. Okay. Do you know the date you made the payment? Paid for not look for the transaction assessment log in. Does the date? That's what I need. Uh, um, you're in February session, right? Yes. February. Can I call your number for me? My phone number. Yes. Zero eight one zero eight one zero seven five five six seven five five six seven seven six seven seven six. Hey, how are you? Let me here for so back. Okay, so please Hello, my dear, how are you? Substance. Substance. Are you running those ones? Ah, no, there is so. There is today, yes. One text. Because I didn't see some time to announce this. Oh, my friend, why did they 